It was a warm summer day in the country. A perfect day for kite flying with Bill. Faster! But Bill was busy yelling at a mound of dirt. You can do it! Show him what you got! George was pretty sure that a mound of dirt wouldn't move, no matter how much you encouraged it. Ah! Hi, George! <laughs> Being a city kid, you probably don't race worms, huh? <laughs> They're in there, burrowing. Oh. First one to dig its way out wins. <laughs> Here they come! Ooh. <laughs> Butte, George. George? <laughs> George went to find his own racing worms, and he knew just where to find them. Sometimes they were under the damp leaves in the shade. Sometimes he would find them hiding just below the soft earth by the roses. Wow, that sure is a biggie, George. <laughs> and he sure got a lot of wiggle power. Look at all those segments. Worms' bodies are divided into little sections called segments, which are like muscles that help them to burrow in the soil. Oh! <laughs> so what are you going to do with your new worm, George? <laughs> you want to race Fast Freddy? <laughs> the proper way to have a challenge race is on neutral territory, not in any racer's home yard. So, Bill and George took their worms to neutral territory. Lake Wanasink Lake. George had raced every worm in the valley. Only Mrs. Quinn stood between him and being champ. Mr. Wiggly is the best digger in my garden. Wow, he sure is a big one. <laughs> That's because I feed my worms veggies, and in return, they make my soil better, and that makes better veggies in my garden. Since all you cheering worm racers scare the fish at the lake, I'm going fishing in the river. Don't forget your lunch, dear. Yeah. Come on, guys, it's time for the championship race. Worm race! Worm race! Worm race! Worm race! <gasps> <gasps> oh, no! Mr. Quinn took your worms instead of his lunch! <laughs> Catfish! Uh... With the championship won, George felt his worms deserved to retire to the garden and help the roses grow. <laughs> Worm racing isn't the only sport in town. You'll find a new hobby. <laughs> For City Heritage Week, the man with the yellow hat repainted the Endless Park statue. And George helped. Oh, missed a spot. 
Thanks, George. <laughs> My yellow hat! Oh, thank you, George. What are you looking at? Spider webs? <laughs> well, spiders spin those webs with special spider silk. They live there. Uh-huh, and the webs catch their food. Ooh, <laughs> Hold it. Ooh. Spiders don't eat apples. They eat small insects and flies. <laughs> George didn't want to eat flies, but he likes spider webs so much Ooh. that he wondered why he couldn't make a monkey web which would catch monkey food. Oh, no. If it's caught in your web, it's yours to keep. <laughs> oh, no. This is going to be ruined. <laughs> George, are, are these to cover the statue? <laughs> wow. You even brought plenty of extra strong tape so it won't blow away. Thanks. You really saved the day. <laughs> George, let's get home before we get caught in the rain. Oh, hey, what's this? <laughs> well, that is a pretty good monkey web, George. <laughs> It looked good, but could it catch anything? No! Oh. This is my grandfather's collection of antique postcards. They're priceless. <laughs> we'll never get them all. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, it's hopeless. The museum wanted to display them. Now they're going to be lost. <laughs> oh my, what luck that this big, sticky uh, web thing was here. Oh, that wasn't luck. That was a monkey. <laughs> oh, Rain, I've got to recover that statue now. Oh, and I'd better get these to the museum fast. Thanks again. Spiderwebs had to be saved from the storm, too. <laughs> Making webs was hard. George was impressed little spiders could do such amazing things. George got rid of the rainy day and gave him a sunny mountain view. So, is it he? I believe so, Your Highness. Your Highness? What? You are in the presence of Her Royal Majesty, the Princess of Bratsvia. So now, we bow. Wow! A real princess in our lobby! And now, we oh. leave. Uh, hey! Wait a minute! <laughs> you 
can't walk away with Hundley. Oh, we got carried away. This may be a descendant of the royal dachshund of Bratsvia. Huh? A royal doggy. I always knew he was special. <laughs> we must adjourn to the royal quarters and complete the test. Only if I come with you. <laughs> You're both more than welcome, especially the fuzzy <laughs> monkey. <laughs> <laughs> He weighs much more than a helmet. He is not royal. Uh, shouldn't we weigh him without the monkey? <laughs> <gasps> They're the same. He is royalty, beyond question. <laughs> You're one special dog, Hunley. Not Henley. His name is Lord Percival Barkington the 15th. Percival Barkington? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> and now Lord Percival can take his rightful place in his new home. Ooh, new home? <laughs> you want us to live here? Not you. Just Lord Percival. Ooh. <laughs> Hunley? Without me? Was he really four stripes long? <laughs> that guy must have had some strong neck muscles to wear this. the same too. Hundley matched all the measurements. George never noticed that mark on Hundley before today. It smelled like jelly. Percival, are you all right? There was no time to look for soap. Is something wrong? A fuzzy monkey. Oh, do I get him too? Uh, no, Your Highness. Now he will go. <laughs> Wait, look. Lord Percival's royal birthmark has vanished. Impossible. That would mean... He's, He's not, not Lord, Lord Percival, Percival after, after all. all. <laughs> <laughs> so, we made a mistake. Huntley must return to his old life. You hear that, boy? Don't be too sad, Huntley. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't be too happy, either. Please accept our gift of the Royal Bratsfee and Leek and Gravy Hoagie. Uh, A dog's lobby was his castle. And for Hundley, even better than a real castle. The man with the yellow hat's hat was special. But what made it so special? George, come on, it's time to go. When I put my hat on, I'm all ready to head out the door. But, huh? What? what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. George, that was funny, but you know the rule. No one is allowed to play with the yellow hat. George sure liked that yellow hat. <laughs> what made the yellow hat so great? Ooh. 
<laughs> it was just plain fun. George, I, I need to wear the hat for an important speech at the museum. Please don't play with it. <sighs> That's what George wanted. A fun hat that he could play with. <laughs> George wanted his fun hat to be more than just a normal hat. And in conclusion, bloody bloody blah, blah etc., so forth and so on. <laughs> well, that's some hat. And yellow. <laughs> Can I see? <laughs> oh, boy, this is one fun hat. <laughs> wow, if I could have had a hat like this, I may never have gotten my yellow one. That was the best thing anyone ever said to George. <laughs> you want me to have it? <laughs> this is the best thing anyone ever gave me. <laughs> oh, surprisingly comfortable. <laughs> oh no, I'm late. George, I've got five minutes to get to the museum for my speech. I have to make a good impression. <laughs> George was tempted to play with the yellow hat, but the man had asked him not to because he needed to wear it to give a very important speech <laughs> at the museum. Oh boy. Uh, Professor Wiseman asked me to speak today about the scientific method. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we've all heard the saying, what goes around comes around. Um, haven't we? Um, did I say something wrong? No, continue. This is fascinating. Whoa, what's stuck to my hat? Oh! I'm wearing George's... <laughs> Actually, I, I can explain. The scientific method is about thinking creatively, taking chances, and being willing to fail. And you made that point very dramatically. I did? Oh, so modest. Now where can I get a hat like that? Well, George made it. I want one. I want two. <laughs> And that's how George got his picture on the museum wall. Oh, that's, that's a ferry boat. It carries people in cars across the river. George loved cars, but cars and boats together? It was the apple pie and ice cream of transportation. <laughs> Today's our annual model boat show. Big prizes for little boats. George! Over here! What do you think of her, George? <laughs> Sailors call boats her. I bet a city kid like you never knew that. <laughs> yeah. You made that, Bill? Yes, sir. Well, that is pretty impressive, isn't it, George? <laughs> 
Oh, thanks. But it's nothing compared to Mr. Quint's model whaling boat. That's it over there. Draw the nets, laddies. Aye, aye, Captain. And over there is Mrs. Rankin's Ark. And look at all those over there. Ooh. It's some pretty tough competition this year. Now don't underestimate yourself, Bill. That is one fine looking boat. Good luck. <laughs> oh sure, you can stay with Bill. I'll set you up right here. Okay, I'll be over at the bleachers saving up some seats and sizing up Bill's competition. I'd sure like to win a ribbon, George. To buy this kit, I had to save nine weeks of money for my paper out. Oh, I almost forgot to do my paper out. Could you do me a big favor and wash my boat while I'm gone? <laughs> George couldn't figure out what he'd done to it. It looked perfect. But he knew one thing. No! <laughs> Bill couldn't enter the contest with this boat. <laughs> George had to build him a new one, and fast. Unfortunately, George had no idea how to do that. Okay, a wide boat, with steam coming out, and a propeller. All done! I'm just gonna drop my bike at home. Would you mind watching my boat for a few more minutes? Huh? <laughs> George? Huh? <laughs> I forgot to close the windows. Thanks for showing me. I would have really been sunk if it happened in the contest. <laughs> Model boating requires utmost attention to tiny details. And keeping the water out. <laughs> Congratulations, George. I, I didn't even know you built a boat. I convinced him to enter it. And did you see this? It says best boat by a monkey. <laughs> That's funny. They must have run out of regular ribbons. I'll take care of this. I'll ask him to make you one that says best boat by a city kid. What do you think? Very impressive. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it, George. Oh, we should go. The rocket presentation is starting soon. Are you coming with us, George? Or do you want to stay here and watch the clock? <laughs> Well, if it's okay with Professor Wiseman, it's okay with me. Now, if you want to see the little people play again, move the minute hand once around to 12. 
<laughs> Have fun. How long does it take to build a clock like that? Oh, about three years. Oh, that reminds me. I'll be right back. George, be a good little monkey. Exactly. George wanted to see the little people again. That looked like George's friend, Compass, the almost homing pigeon. Because when all the other homing pigeons homed in on the statue, they almost made it. It was Compass, all right. George was happy to see his friend, the pigeon. He couldn't fix the minute hand, and that's what made the little people play. <laughs> George remembered there was another way into the clock, the back. take something apart, it's a good idea to pay attention to what went where. Where could George find out how a clock's parts go together? The library. Of course. He hoped studying the big clock would show him exactly what to do with the little clock. had stopped. Whose tools are these? Okay, and this goes there. Now, you see? <gasps> what a beautiful clock. Did you make it? <laughs> I know everything about clocks, but not one thing about understanding monkey. <laughs> George, how did this heavy metal toolbox get so... Tracy taught her chicks to walk tall and be proud like a chicken. <laughs> it 
it was time for a bath because in being proud like a chicken, neatness counts. George? Would you come here, please? <laughs> the neighbors will be here soon for our monthly game lunch, so I need you to run to the store. <laughs> We're out of toothpicks. It's not a party if you don't pick up small food with toothpicks. Uh -huh. Oh, we need marshmallows, too. And a new deck of cards. You, uh, you got some jelly on the old deck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so take this list to Ada and Luke's general store, okay? <laughs> that sounded like a chicken in trouble. George could see those six chicks needed to be rescued. Now all the chicks had to do was walk across. <laughs> the bridge wasn't chick safe yet. What could he do to make it safer? That bridge had sides made from triangle shapes. suggested they cross one at a time, in case the bridge wasn't strong enough to hold them all. But the bridge was plenty strong. It even held a whole hand. A job well done. George could now rush home with the marshmallows, toothpicks, and cards. Maybe not straight home. <laughs> that must be some party if you need more marshmallows, toothpicks, and cards already. <laughs> now it's officially a party. <laughs> All righty. We're going to play goldfish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, come see what the chickens built. They are geniuses. We better start looking at colleges. And that's how the Rankins College Fund for Gifted Chickens got its start. George. Uh, I'm gonna sleep five more minutes, okay? No! <laughs> yes, sorry! This here roller coaster whips and snaps your round hairpin turns at 70 miles per hour! So come on down to Zany Island and ride the Turbo Python 3000. That's Captain's ah. orders. Arr. Everyone was excited about riding the Turbo Python 3000. Except the man with the yellow hat. He was afraid of roller coasters and remembered the first and last time he rode a roller coaster. It was so long ago, he was just the boy with the yellow hat. <laughs> yeah! And since that day, roller coasters upset him. Okay, I'm a grown man. 
I have no reason to fear a roller coaster. No! Uh, enjoy the ride, George. Whew. I am thirsty. Well, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, but you can't ride the Turbo Python 3000. Huh? Well, you have to be as tall as this sign to ride. And, uh, you're not. <laughs> That's it, honey. Go to sleep. Nothing makes you grow like a good sleep. Huh? And I want you to grow up to be big and healthy. All this growing made George tired. If sleep made you grow, he could do two things at once. <laughs> sleep made George grow a lot at least in his dream. I'm sorry. You can't ride the Turbo Python 3000. You're too big. George didn't grow as big as he had in his dream, but he grew enough to be five licorice whips tall. <laughs> Seeing Betsy lose her hat reminded the man with the yellow hat of that fateful day. My hat! I lost my hat! No! <laughs> That's it. I I'm not afraid of roller coasters. I'm afraid of losing my yellow hat. Your hat is safe, Betsy! <laughs> What's with all these sour faces? I don't like sour faces at me park, you know. Oh, hi there, Captain Zany. You see, this monkey's too short to ride the Turbo Python 3000. Too short? Bah! He's not too short. Monkeys don't grow very big. That's why we have the... You must be this tall if you're a monkey side. <sighs> you can ride, George, and I'm coming with you. But first, give me all your licorice. Huh? Whoa! Geometric Exploring presents Pirates of the Wimekas. Wow. How'd you like to sail a ship like that, Hundley? <laughs> now there was a ship that couldn't be sunk by monkey breath. The SS Wimekas was attacked by the bold pirate Black Hat Besame. Hey. Pirate vessel off the port bow. All hands to your stations. Whole wind, coxswain. Oh. <laughs> oh. Those ships were so dignified and neat. Wouldn't it be great to be an old-time captain? <laughs> the neatest ship to ever set sail was the SS Dignified. Its commander was world-renowned. Captain Hundley. No other captain was as smart, as orderly, or had as wet a nose. All's clear, Captain Hundley, sir. Thank you, sir. You know how much your approval means to me, sir. Captain Hundley's crew was always orderly and efficient. Ride the breezes like Captain Hundley. The 
greatest sailor in the history of wind. But all was not smooth sailing. The wind was so strong, the pirates were upon the dignified before Captain Hundley could give orders. The pirates were led by... Yellow Hat the Pirate. He's famous, you know. Hi, how are you? We're uh, taking over your ship because, uh, well, you know, that's, that's what pirates do. But the most undignified thing wasn't putting Captain Hundley in his own brig. It was this. Who are you? <laughs> I like you already. Come on out and have fun with us. George wanted to hang it up where Captain Hundley could enjoy it. George got an idea about how he could really help Captain Hundley. Are you down here? Oh, my goodness. I mean, R. Wake up. Uh, put on life vests. We're, we're filling with water. Sinking. We, we, we got to get back to our own ship. <laughs> Captain Hundley used the wind perfectly, and they set sail. George! George! <laughs> hey, that, that sounds fun, doesn't it, George? <laughs> Say, Hunley, your good pal George is going to come out on the boat with us today. <laughs> At least Hunley knew what to expect, so he was prepared. <laughs> 